Jeremy Scahill, um, what was your impression of watching the, this, this kind of the posture from the Democratic Party at, at, at this convention on, on, on national security issues, which is what you cover? Well, I mean, you know, regarding the, the way that, uh, you know, Osama bin Laden's name was used by the Democrats at the convention, it, it really felt like we were watching a parade of, of jingoism that belonged in a sports bar. And, and you know, I, I, I think that the, the fact is that, that there has been no serious analysis of the president's foreign policy in all of the coverage I've seen of the Democratic National Convention, including MSNBC, there has been no serious, hard-hitting critique of the president's foreign policy from the issues that actually are real or that distinguish him, uh, you know, from the Republicans. Because th the fact is that the Democratic foreign policy is distinguishable from the Republicans only insofar as the president took some of the worst aspects of the Bush era foreign policy and pushed them forward. Well, well that, the idea, not, wait a second. Yeah. That, that's not entirely. That's not entirely fair. I mean, there's some truth to that. But if you look at what, the, what what's happened on Iran over the past few weeks, I think where I think the administration has quite skillfully pushed back on pressure that was mounting on them to set a deadline by which they would take military action. I think that was a pretty significant Look, we, we have we, we have a, We have a president who, in a two-week period, authorized the, the assassination of three U.S. citizens in Yemen, including a 16-year-old boy uh, who was killed while he was having a barbecue with his teenage friends you know, named Abdul Rahman al uh, They have never been able to produce who the target of that strike right, was. Yeah, I just want to make sure uh, that we been, do not know that the, he the, was the, the target. The pres the, the, well, he, uh, the president authorized operations over a two-week period that and resulted in the him. deaths of three yes. American citizens, yes. including a 16-year-old boy. That, and, and, and if you're going to use Osama bin Laden's uh, killing as a football to spike on the national stage, I want the president of the United States to explain to the American people why... why I, I, if you're I mean, going to use it in such a jingoistic way, yes, if you're going to use it in such a cynical way. I agree with you about the drone policy, but it would be political malpractice to A, not kind of milk the bin Laden thing on the national stage when you're running against the Republicans. I, I, and look, also I, I travel in countries where, 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 in, where these drone strikes happen. I, I'm not talking about political malpractice. Right, but I'm we're talking, about, talking about the convention. So there's two different things. There's the discussion about the president's foreign policy, but then there's also the discussion about kind of how they're using that foreign policy to win a very important election. But, but many of the media discussions, including here on MSNBC, about foreign policy during the convention felt like we were watching an Obama for America meetup, not an actual serious critique of this president's most egregious aspects of his foreign policy, where you do see that of the Republicans. There's all of this going after Romney, and I think it's completely legitimate. But some of the core issues of this president's national, foreign, uh, national security policy are not being debated. And, and I'm sorry, but watching John Kerry and Joseph Biden criticizing uh, the, the war in Iraq. They voted for the war in Iraq. Joe Biden was the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and shut down debate uh, about Iraq when, when it was being debated in this country. I mean, there's revisionism, there's jingoism. T to me, I'm not thinking about this from a cynical political perspective. I'm talking about life and death issues that cut to the heart of are we going to follow the Constitution when it comes to due process well, for should, American but, citizens. We should dis we disaggregate some of the issues, right? Because I think a lot of things are getting bound up in that, right? There's, so there is the ending the war in Iraq, right? It, the status Forces Agreement was negotiated by the Bush administration that we adhered to. There was even some evidence we were trying to get out of it. But at the end of the day, the end result was the president did end the war, right? I mean, we were going to keep uh, quite a large force of um, essentially paid mercenaries behind. There's a huge embassy. But combat tro troops have been brought home. And I think that, that that is in one column. There's extension. There's the surge in Afghanistan, right? The, the injury troops. We have 87,000 troops there. And the deadline for that. There's the the decision to to order the strike against Osama bin Laden. And then there is the the, the massive drone policy and all of the um, engagements that we've engaged in in terms of bombing and drones across other theaters that you've been covering. So I just want to put those out there as distinct things. And then there's Iran. There's Iran yeah. Right. So let's let's sort of look at some of those individually rather than as a sort of full portfolio. And Tulsi, I'd like to get your thoughts on it when we come back.